the song that we're going to do. Well, we're going to do some more smile songs also. But <laughs> the last song that we're going to, song song that we're going to do is called The Perfect Day. And um, this song is super cool, and I'm just going to talk for a while about it. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is our most popular song, sold over 5 million copies, and it was written in 1909. Um, but, and um, so I'm actually going to read an excerpt from her autobiography about the story, about what this song is about, what inspired her to write this song. So, okay, so this is going to be a long quote from autobiography. <laughs> so, the, um, the story of the writing of The End of a Perfect Day has been told many, many times and in many, many ways, but the truth is a very simple story. The inspiration came to me as I was viewing a wonderful sunset from the top of Mount Rubido in Riverside, California, this glorious place that has been made famous by the Easter morning sunrise services, but not only by Frank Miller, master of Mission N. I had been motoring through Southern California with some nature-loving friends. We had been seeing many beautiful sights, but the glory of the sunset from the mountain was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. I hurried back to the mission inn to get ready for dinner, and while dressing, I thought how oh, I wished I could express my thanks to those friends in some little way, just out of the ordinary, and almost at once came the words for a perfect day. I wrote them very hurriedly. I did not have time to change a word or a sentence. I took them down and read them at the dinner that evening, and put them in my purse and thereupon forgot them. Three months later, I was crossing the Mojave Desert in the moonlight with some more nature-loving friends, and without realizing that I had memorized these words, I began singing them to the original tune. My friend, Mrs. Hawks, who sat next to me, said, Carrie, you have another song, haven't you? Well, I replied, maybe I have. <laughs> I stayed at her home that night, but did not go to sleep. I finished the song entirely by morning. So that's what A Perfect Day is about. Um, and interestingly, though, it didn't actually get super popular when it was written. It, um, it actually started to get popular in during World War One, and that's because, so Jacob Swan was like already super popular by then, so she was invited to go and like, uh, like singing tour around the U.S. Army bases in Europe, and so she would go around singing her songs. And a perfect day in particular just got really popular among the soldiers, and it kind of became like a like an anthem for the war. And it was sung after like battles were won and stuff. And that's actually how it got its popularity, which is really interesting because it was like five years later than after it was written. Um, and um, the next thing that's super interesting about this song is that, like, well, it's not super interesting because this is actually like really common for all popular music, is that there are multiple different versions of it in terms of instrumentation. So for so James Bond wrote two of these herself, or maybe more, I don't know, but um, there's this version that's like just for piano and voice, and then there's also a version for cello, <laughs> and which is what we're gonna do. Um, but that was actually really common to have multiple versions of a parlor song, and it actually kind of indicated how popular the song was. So the more popular songs would get more um, like covers of them, essentially, with different instrumentations. And um, the specific instruments were also um, kind of reflected the like talent of the musicians who were playing them. So. Uh, Women were in the like 1800s America. Women were generally taught to play some sort of like either taught to sing or taught some sort of like accompanying instrument like piano, harp, or guitar. And then, um, so the, all the like young girls will be learning these instruments and learning how to play them. And um, I mean that's why you have so many women composers of songs. That's what they learned. But then also the um, boys of the family would, if they learned an instrument, they'd often learn some sort of instrumental, like solo instrument, like violin or cello was really common. Um, so like having these different versions for um, different, of these song, popular songs for different instrumentations kind of like allowed like, like more people to just participate in the music making, like an entire family, you'd have like some children who would play the piano, some who maybe would play the cello, and then like there could just be like, everyone could kind of participate in the music that way. Um, so that's why there's like so many versions of these songs. Um, and yeah, I think that's really interesting. And the last thing I want to mention before we play A Perfect Day is that you've actually already heard this song. We have sung it once this evening. So we'll see if you recognize it. <laughs> 